So let's make just a buck with the simplest form with the simplest form that you can even think of. A diode. <laughs> yes. Let's put a low side shot key diode. Because today I'm so lazy that I, I don't even want to do the synchronous version, so we'll put the diode. And now let's put, uh, for instance, a reasonable value of uh, inductor. So let's put uh, 20 micro. And let's put also uh, 20 micro here as filter capacitor. And let's put a load of, uh, I don't know, 10 ohms. So now you should, you should design the controller like the, a type 2, type 3 controller. But since I am, I am so lazy, I will import directly my control loop. Let's put a useless input capacitor. And so let's make our control system, finally. So let's make a ideal ground. So first, you should use a divider, but let's not put a divider and, and let's make this in the simplest way possible. So you have the output voltage here. And now you should have also the reference. So the reference says how much output voltage you want. The question is simple. Let's put, for instance, 5 volts. Um, yes, I want 5 volts. So as you can see in the beginning of the control system, the reference should be put on the positive and the output on the negative. This will give the error, and the error will be compensated by the compensator. So, let's put uh, the subtractor. Now you understand why I make the symbol here, because if you, if you don't have the symbols, uh, you're probably going to be, you're gonna, probably gonna be lost, or you could even... Okay, so now you have the error. You're gonna feed the error. You're gonna feed the error into the compensator. So let's open the PI controller and let's exactly put this to use. Please, please, please. Okay. Ooh. Yes. So now we have the PI controller. And now what you should have is the. Uh, I didn't draw this, but. Uh, after you put the compensator, C, uh, you should have the triangular square waveform into a comparator system. So here will be you, you have the error, and then at the output you're gonna have the, P, the PWM. So how can you do this? You can even create another simulink block, but I think that it is not necessary. Uh, let's call it uh, comp in comp out, so this is the output of the comparator. Ooh. So this is the output of the comparator. And so now we make uh, another... Uh, let's open just a triangular square waveform. Now you just need to define uh, one parameter, which is called uh, the, the switching frequency. Let's put it uh, 1 kilohertz. So the triangular output will be something of, uh, for instance, uh, uh, 0, 15 volts, uh, uh, rise as 1 over 2 times Fs. How did they call this division frequency? As Fs. Yes, it is correct. Same rise, same fall and 1 nano as on, and the period is 1 over fs. You should see that this is a reasonable softwood or triangular waveform. So this is the triangular waveform. Now we won't make the comparator. We can just make the isolated comparator or even an ideal comparator as you want, as you prefer. You can use the op-amp and make the comparator. It, it is exactly the same, but just to be sure, let's uh, put uh, a B overall voltage, because that is going to work, uh, BV, and let's, uh, let's write uh, that uh, 
uh, if if the triangular waveform is higher than the voltage of the compensator output then it is 15 volts it is equal to 15 or zero otherwise let me check if all the brackets are correct if v3 is higher than v comparator 15 zero so yeah and uh, uh, now that, that that will be your pulse um, first of all this is uh, with the with the less sign so it is it is like that then uh, it is preferable to put also the minus uh, minus 10 here but uh, most of, the most important thing is the the transient so you want to, to skip the first uh, initial operating solution otherwise it, it will lag too much and then the second thing that we want to do is to uh, is to uh, tune the control effectively because you can't expect the controller to work actually in the in uh, by ran by random values so uh, that's really a fact so let's put first a high load condition with two ohms for instance and let's put uh, 10 10 volts so let's see what happens in the simulation uh yes uh i uh okay okay i uh turn i um i went uh, backwards so much that i forgot to take the parameters of the controller and uh, to tune it So this is the output voltage, and uh, uh, first question, I is it working? The answer is yes, because we have the reference at 5 ohms, as, as 5 volts, sorry, and this, uh, as you can see there is a little bit of overshoot at the beginning, and the output voltage, and the output voltage follows the reference. So if I put, you, you can see this by just seeing the duty cycle. The duty cycle is changing is changing dynamically in order to adjust the duty cycle. The first thing that you want to do is to put the gate resistor uh, with uh, 5 ohms, for instance, uh, in order to prevent uh, some spikes. You see that there are 10 amps of spikes here. You want to prevent that uh, um, just by putting a gate resistor. It should now should be fine because we have slowed uh, a little bit the transistor. And as you can see, we have saved uh, maybe some spikes. Yes, there are system spikes, but it is still acceptable. It is still acceptable. So now we have the control, we have the voltage here, the output voltage, which is following the uh, resonance nicely, which is following, sorry, the, uh, the, um, the reference nicely. So we expect that the duty cycle should be 0 0.5 once the transient is over. So let's check that. Yes, it is 0 0.5 because, as you can see, the period in which it's on is, is the same as the period in which it's off. Let's put uh, 2, and we expect uh, what at the output? Well, we expect a larger transient because we are stressing the back much, and as you can see, we have a higher overshoot, but it is still following the reference. So that's a good thing. Now, what we want to do exactly is to tune the... Uh, the... So let's see what happens if we, if we tune the... Uh, for instance, we, we want to decrease the, the capacitance. Let's see what happens. So I decrease the capacitance and the overshoot has decreased. So let's now put a uh, dot step do, uh, dot step param c uh, dot step param c list and it should, and it should okay, list 10 nano 20 nano and 100 nano so let's see what happens if i put a list of capacitor and they keep the gain equal 2.7k let's run the simulation yeah by the way 10 milli is too much so as we can see by changing uh, by keeping the same value of the capacitor 
now we are really tuning the uh, we are really tuning the the uh, output transient so as you can see it is behaving uh, better in the when the the curve is uh, uh, green so we will see that the the green curve is the best in the, and the nano is 10 so we will put just 10 as value of the param here g equal to 10 nano now let's tune the resistor r1 dot step r1 list but let's put reasonable values 1 kilo 2 kilo 5 kilo and let's see what happens okay something is uh, okay so it was just lagging a bit So as you can see, also the oscillation is varying by changing also the, the R1 because R1 is directly, is the gain connected with the integral action. So as you can see, you need also the some derivative here, I will explain in, in, in the next video, to tune exactly the overshoot here. Or if you are lucky, you can just increase, you can just increase the value of the inductor and decrease the value of the capacitance here just to reduce the stress in your circuit. By the way, this transient is too long, let's just keep 20 milli. So, and as you can see, we are and also in, naturally it depends also on the reference voltage because if I put 9 volts the back will be less stressed so as you can see there is just a little bit of overshoot but you can say that it is basically compensated if the reference voltage is low so naturally this will be done by a microcontroller but as you can see you can tune the over the tune the pipe controller in order to have the desired overshoot and the design faster response this will change, of course, even based to the load. If we decrease the load, the transient response will drastically uh, change because basically you are saying that uh, you are uh, uh, putting your controller in a, a less... Uh, so the... Um, it can work better if it is in full load condition because uh, here it is working uh, almost, I think, in DCM. So it is... Uh, at a light load condition, if I put 100 ohm, it should be awful. Yes, it is awful because you are basically working in DCM. Probably, yes, you are basically working in uh, basically working DCM. So it is really horrible this converter, and it has uh, an horrible uh, transient. Uh, as you can see, the duty cycle is almost zero in some points so it is an, a condition at which you don't want to operate uh, let's put instead a full load condition and as you can see the overshoot uh, as you can see it is uh, the overshoot is basically not present in full load condition so to make a recap you have to consider the inductance you have to consider the, the load and you have to consider also the capacitor in order to tune correctly the in order to tune correctly the the output voltage this video will be uh, quite long but i'm so proud of this as you can see the duty cycle is changing dynamically and i think that we can end this video right now thank you so much